Hey everyone, welcome to my first Q&A video. I said I was going to do this last week or the week before that. I have a ton of really cool questions from a bunch of different videos, so I hope you enjoy this. So Sebastian asks, what are your favorite games from an artistic perspective and from a design perspective? So I'll give a few. I love the Soul series, so Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, all those games. Uh, in terms of, I love the gameplay, so the design of the gameplay, how it feels very real, and that each encounter feels very dangerous to the player, so you are always thinking um, and analyzing situations, you're problem solving on the go, which is really nice, uh, and the world building of the game is awesome. I also love Half-Life 2, I love the, the design of Half-Life 2 and how they designed kind of each section, each room, to make the player think from room to room, even if it was something as simple as putting a few crates in the way of a door, or if it was something a bit more complex, like having to find a puzzle solution in a room, or a combat uh, encounter. I just really love the pacing and the way they designed the game Half-Life 2. And also it has these really great moments of what they call exotic gameplay, where you might get a weapon like a gravity gun, or you might be able to drive a vehicle. It just has a lot of really cool elements that all mix together. So definitely the Soul series, Half-Life 2. I loved the first Bioshock. Uh, when I was growing up, Final Fantasy VII had a massive impact on me as well. These are the types of games that I really like and enjoy. The second question is, do you do game development and YouTube full-time? So I am doing game development full-time now. YouTube is kind of full-time. I put as much time as I have in the week to it. That doesn't detract too much from my game development. I was teaching for two years before this, and I basically saved all of that money, and I'm now trying to do my own startup. So I'm just trying to make these games by myself, and I'm now jumping into VR, which I'm really excited for. And the last question from Sebastian is, what is your favorite part of game development and what is your least favorite? <laughs> so I guess my favorite part is when you've made all the modular uh, prefabs or blueprints, when you've made everything and you just develop the level and test it. I love developing levels. I love having all of the parts together, everything functional, and then making really exciting set pieces and levels. That's like one of the best things. And also just making the levels look amazing, doing the lighting. Those are my favorite bits. Uh, my least favorite, which I don't really have to worry about much anymore, it's pretty much the asset creation, so developing 3D assets. Modeling and unwrapping and texturing, it's very tedious, I'm not too into it. So that's probably my least favorite. Ghost asks, are you going to try get with, oh, are you going to try get with or start an indie company or get with a AAA company like Naughty Dog, Rockstar, etc. So as I mentioned in my previous answers, I am looking to start my own indie company studio, but I am starting it very small just by myself because I don't have enough money to employ other people right now, but I do have enough money to contract others when needed. So right now how it's working is I'm developing my game, I've got my YouTube going, um, YouTube will help me promote my game, as well as help people when I do tutorials, and I can just share stuff and get feedback from all you guys, so it's really amazing. Uh, at the moment, Patreon money is going directly back into YouTube, but if Patreon grows a bit more, I can use some of that to put into my game, and I can hire someone to do music and stuff like that. Uh, and in terms of what my major goals are, it's to really release games, so I can hopefully inspire other people to release games because the the more credibility I have the and the more experiences the more I can support and motivate others to do some great things as well so really uh, my main motivation is to release games that people really like hopefully love and enjoy and then inspire other people to do the same Laughing Man 123 asks, how did you get into game development? So when I was around 11 or 12, um, back then I installed every demo I could get my hands on from magazines like PC Powerplay and all that. 
and I just played a ton of different games. I loved Age of Vampires and all those games back then. And what happened was one day there was this. Um, d there was. <clears throat> so I got two discs in a PC Power Play, which was super exciting. And one of them had a thing called Game Maker. So I thought, oh wow, Game Maker, that means I can make games. Cool. I had no idea what it was about at the time. I installed it and I started using Game Maker. So when I was 12, I just followed the tutorials. I didn't really have much of an internet connection back then because internet was still kind of new, dial-up, modem. Um, and if I wanted to say play a game like RuneScape, I'd have to go all the way to the router, which was in my brother's room, which was out of the main house, and uh, play there. But what happens back then is if you are using the internet, if someone needs to make a phone call, you have to disconnect from the internet and that person makes a call. So I didn't have tutorials accessible. So what I have to do is use the tutorials that came on the disc. And that's how I started. I used Game Maker. And then when I was around 16 to 17, Flash and Newgrounds was massive. And I was so interested in this stuff that I started learning Action Script and Flash and making sprites. And I made a few small games, but I never uploaded them just because I had no idea what I was doing back then. And then there was an engine, I think it was like Cube 3D or something. And it was the first time I did 3D where I was just messing around making cool little maps. And then later on, I went to UDK and then Unre Unity. And now I'm in Unreal. So that's kind of like the progression. Uh, Ico Pico asks, will you ever go back to Unity? Probably not. And here's the reasons why. If I was going to make a 2D game or if I was going to make mobile games, I would definitely go back to Unity because my workflow is so quick. I can get those games out very fast. Uh, but at the moment, I'm focused more on PC games. So um, when I look at it on paper, Unreal gives me a lot more options and a higher visual fidelity. So I'm just going to stick with Unreal. And I'm currently really enjoying the workflow of using blueprints to develop stuff. So for someone like me and how my mind works, blue, uh, Unreal is really intuitive and I love using it. So yeah, I probably never will go back at this point. Uh, you also ask, uh, what engine is the best slash easiest for beginners? So this question is not easy to answer. Uh, I would recommend you figure out what type of games you want to make, whether that's 2D, 3D, what platforms you want to make it on, and then from there, figure out which engine best supports the platform you want to make, and just start making games. Nibs asks, Hey Matthew, do you primarily do speed level designs using environment, level packs, or prefab 3D models? So, all my level design stuff that you see on this channel, the speed level design stuff, it's all uh, from the marketplace. So it was either from the Unity Asset Store or the Unreal Marketplace. Um, those, those videos are so much fun to do because you're getting someone else's work and their vision and you're making your own thing out of it and it's fun to just sit back and make a level using all these really amazing art assets um, because you just get to create something really f enjoyable um, and something that looks really amazing in like an hour or two hours or less as opposed to spending you know weeks making them and then trying to do a video it's way more enjoyable to use something kind of like Lego you just have all these bits and you put them together it's really fun so yeah, I primarily use uh, level packages from the asset store. Rice Prez Pip asks, um, if I had the power to make any game in the world, regardless of scope or complexity, what kind of game would you make? I wouldn't make a traditional game. I would actually make something, uh, a mixed reality game. So what I would do is I'm big into kind of like martial arts and sword combat and stuff. I find that really interesting. <clears throat> So what I would do is, if I had all the resources in the world, I would like either rent or build this building. And what it would be is, okay, so this building would be like a set from Lord of the Rings or something with like a castle on one end and then like this kind of battlefield leading up to the castle. And what would happen is you'd have like 30 versus 30 or whatever 
and everyone would be in this suit. So if you get hit by like a weapon, you can't really feel it, but the suit registers the damage, and then you take damage to that point, and um, everyone would have a UI. So when you're out, your character like dies and you just walk away. So that's the kind of mixed reality where this suit is actually part of the gameplay where it gets hit and the person doesn't get injured in real life, it just takes away from the HP or if it's like a killing blow, you just lose all your HP at once. And what it would be like is you're actually like doing real life battles, you can use bows and stuff and all this great stuff but you're in this protective suit so you can go crazy and it would be scenarios like you've got to storm the castle and take over and like one person's playing the king, commanding the troops and then all these epic battles take place. So it'd be like a mixed reality medieval battle thing. So yeah, that's what I would make. Probably very different to what people thought I'd make. And the last question is from Daniel Vutran. Uh, how did you learn UE4 official YouTube channel documentation? So I basically made a ton of little prototypes and learnt along the way. I'm still learning, so when I did my first initial week and my first few weeks, I made, geez, way over 10 projects. I was just spending 10 to 12 hours a day, nonstop, making a ton of stuff, a ton of different things. So what I like to do is, if you saw my VR uh, prototypes, I will take something, say like a pickup system, I will learn how to make it. And then I'll try to make a little game around it, which I did with the throwing bombs. And then in the the other VR video, I wanted to learn how to hold an object and interact with the held object, which is when I did the shooting mechanic. And when I started, my initial goal was uh, what type of environment can I make? So I got an asset pack for free and I tried to make a really nice environment. And then I started putting the templates in for fun. And then after that, I was wondering, oh, how difficult would it be to make a first-person puzzle game? So I made a really short first-person puzzle game. So what what I'm trying to get at is the way I learn fast is I will take a very specific mechanic, learn how to make it without the use of tutorials, just documentation, so I fully understand it and I have problem solved. And then from there, I make a little game around it. And then I move on to the next thing rapidly. And what happens is after, I think it's been two months now, I'm ready to make my own commercial games. So that's kind of how I've been learning. But I, of course, I do use tutorials here and there. So like Tesla Dev, he's been really amazing. I think another one is Dean Asford. He has some really amazing stuff I'd recommend you guys check out. But um, yeah, that's how I've kind of learned. So that's the end of this Q&A. If you have some questions for the next one, feel free to uh, write a comment below. I like I actually enjoyed answering these questions. It's nice not to do something super scripted for once. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, let me know, leave some questions below, and I will see you in the next video.